What do you want to do today, Grandpa? How about we go to the mall? Uh, maybe we could go for a hike. I hope you're joking. Well, maybe we could go to a museum. Boring. What do you mean? Museums aren't boring. Yes, they are. Some mummy wrapped up in toilet paper crumbling in the basement of a depressing old building. History isn't some Halloween costume in a basement. History is the solar nebula forming the Earth and other planets in the solar system 4.5 billion years ago. Then some bacteria starting to move around, and about 580 million years ago we have some sea anemones and some jellyfish. This is evolutionary history. It's science, but it's also history. These invertebrates started migrating to the land, and somewhere about 360 million years ago became tetrapods. There were four-legged creatures walking around on the land. These creatures turned into dinosaurs, and about 200 million years ago stomped all around the planet. Then 65 million years ago an asteroid, boom, struck the planet and killed all the dinosaurs. But the ones who lived took to the air and sea and thrived now that their main predators were gone. One of these creatures that survived was a primate named Plesiadipus. Then there was like 14 or more permutations that went on until about 200,000 years ago you get boom, homo sapiens, us, you and me. Me? Yeah. Now it starts to get interesting. Modern humans started making clothes out of hides, developing sophisticated hunting techniques, started burying their dead and making paintings on the walls of caves and making jewelry. See art and fashion are history. Humans spread out. By the end of the last ice age, 12,000 years ago, humans had begun to develop agriculture. See what we eat is history too. Farming allowed for denser living and villages started to spring up around the farms which eventually turned into cities and civilizations. 6,000 years ago, Sumeria and Mesopotamia, which is modern day Iraq, was the first civilization to practice intensive year-round agriculture and irrigation. In Sumeria, we have the wheel of arithmetic geometry boats, bronze, leather, axes, knives, saws, chisels, hammers, nails, glue, and beer. Maybe we should go to a bar. Wait, I'm not done yet. One of the most amazing and long-lasting things the Sumerians invented was writing. All this information and technology spreads east and west out of Mesopotamia and into areas like the Mediterranean, where we see the rise of ancient Greece. We have the rise of modern governments, laws, social structures, philosophy, literature, education, science, architecture, religion, and mythology. See, all this is history. Then we have the rise of Rome and the idea of republican government, but of course Rome falls and we enter the Dark Ages. The Visigoths and the Vikings are raiding Europe and we see the rise of Christianity. There was tons of stuff happening in other places, but I want to make this relevant to you, Grandpa. So now we're in the Middle Ages, and their kings and queens and their knights are fighting all over Europe for land and resources, and basically everyone is a poor peasant living in a feudal fiefdom. Millions in Europe are killed by a plague known as the Black Death, which is carried by fleas on rats, which came from the Silk Road in Central Asia. Then the printing press is invented, and ideas and stories are transmitted through documents, and some people decide to leave Europe for the New World, which wasn't really new, but they thought it was new. These people landed in what is now called America, named for the Italian cartographer and explorer Americo Vespucci. Sounds familiar. It should be. These people were a British colony and they eventually went to war with the British to secure their freedom to sell stuff and kill whoever they wanted. They slowly expanded their empire across the continent that they deemed their own. But there were a few vagaries in the system they set up and that led to a war between one half of the country and the other. The southern states wanted to use slave labor and the northern states didn't. I know all about this. Okay, well as trains took over, the country kept spreading further west, killing and brutalizing native peoples the whole way while commandeering their land and eventually forcing them onto reservations. That's sad. Wait, I'm still not done yet. But Washington became a state in 1899 and under President Benjamin Harrison and your grandparents moved here a few years later and your mother was born in the mill town of Everett which sprung up to help mine the silver in Monte Cristo. You were born at the peak of an economic bubble which burst in 1929 forcing millions of people across the industrialized world into poverty and brought the rise of people like Franklin Roosevelt, Benito Mussolini, and Adolf Hitler. You were drafted into World War II and served in the Pacific, becoming part of history, and then came back to home to Seattle, met my grandmother, and had my mother who in turn met my father and had me, making us both part of history. Oh, I like stories about me. Well, history is about you, and it's about me. It's a story of why we are who we are, and why we eat what we eat, and how we dress, and where we live, and how we talk, and everything. History isn't a mummy in a basement, it's us, right here. Great, so should we go to a bar then? Sure, bars have history too.